Officials, here's a reminder type play. On this play, the running back has a stiff arm and he sticks it right in the defender's face mask. He does not grab or twist the face mask, yet the covering official throws a flag for illegal hands to face. We gotta be aware of our rules. The runner is certainly entitled to give a stiff arm to the defender. He can certainly touch the face mask so long as he doesn't grab or twist it. So here, let's be aware of our rules. I'm not sure if we can get in any closer and see it, but uh, understand what the rule is. The runner is allowed to stiff arm his defender. If he happens to uh, hit the face mask, it does not mean it is illegal hands to face or face mask unless the face mask is pulled or twisted. This is a punt. This player here is going to commit an illegal block in the back. It's big. It's there. We want a flag. And you're going to see our side judge right here. He saw it. He throws the flag. What does he forget to do? He stops officiating the play. Right there, you can see. Hey, everybody, I threw a flag. I'm going to go back and get to it. No. Throw the flag. Continue to officiate the play. Head on a swivel. Help clean up afterwards. Advise the referee what you have. But you've got to continue to officiate the play, as we're going to see in this next uh, play that I show you. Now, in contrast to the prior play, let's watch our head linesman down here. He's going to have a correct call for an illegal block in the back. But let's watch his actions as he slides downfield. Where is he looking? He's not up here looking at the runner. He's watching the action in front of the runner, okay? And from the right, we're going to see a block in the back come in right at the point of attack. It's coming. It's right here. You can see it. That is a block in the back, okay? The official flags it, and then he continues to officiate the play. He's not out there saying, hey, everybody, I threw a flag. Look at me. He sees the foul. It's big. He flags it. Then he continues to officiate the play. The point is, you cannot stop officiating after you throw a flag. Excellent job by the headlinesman here. Let's talk a little bit about reverse mechanics. Let's watch our line judge. And our referee on the interception, you don't see the referee yet. Ball's intercepted. Line judge, referee, need to beat feet to the goal line. Look how smooth and athletic both the line judge and the referee are getting in position on the goal line to rule. Also, you can see our umpire back here cleaning up behind the play. He's not watching the ball. He's picking up. The action behind the carrier because he has his head on a swivel. Superb job in reverse mechanics by the referee and the line judge. Let's watch the side judge here. First, he's at 19. He should be at 20. Ball snapped at the 20. You need to be 20 yards back per the state manual. Now, watch what happens here. Remember, the old axiom, never get beat to the goal line. Well, that basically applies to pass plays. We don't ever want our deep officials getting beat to the goal line on a pass play. Here's a little different. We're not going to be able to keep up with this runner, but let's help our matters. Watch our side judge. He's going to stop here to watch the runner break a tackle. Right there. And that's it. That's a fatal error. He's going to get beat deep to the goal line. Instead of getting passed at maybe the 30-yard line, he was passed at the 50. I understand it's going to be tough to keep up with these sprinters, but continue to retreat and maintain your cushion, okay? Retreat, start off at 20, retreat, retreat, retreat. Don't stop to watch the play and become a spectator. It's all over. The well-focused official expects the unexpected. Here we had a 15-yard carry over penalty, so the team is kicking off from the 45. First thing, WD wants four in the box. One, two, three, and believe me, we'll see our fourth official there. So we got four in the box, okay? Now, remember, all the players, except for the kicker, must have their feet inside the five-yard mark, which is right there. Therefore, before we even get ready, we should be doing preventive officiating. Hey, you two, I don't know what their numbers are. You need to get your feet inside the five-yard mark. Do not raise your hand that you are ready with your 11 until 
we have 11 players on the field in proper position. Next thing we want to be aware of, especially in a situation like this, but every play, expect the unexpected. We could have an onside kick. Now, here's uh, the kicker's restraining line right here, okay? In an onside kick situation, which is going to happen here, we treat kicker's restraining line like a plane of glass, and that is if the glass is shattered, we have a foul. Let's watch the kick. Clearly, the glass was shattered. Slow it down. Player immediately to the left of the kicker. We're going to stop it at contact, and he is more than a yard downfield. Federation rules, we want to shut this down. It's dead ball foul. Kill it right now. Keep in mind, if this were the opening kickoff of the game, and this player was about a yard downfield at the kick, we'd let it go. We want to ignore it and just talk to him. Make sure we talk to him and the special teams coach after the play. Hey, coach, your player, 41, whatever number he is, was uh, beyond the kicker's restraining line uh, before the kicker had kicked it, and I'm going to call it next time. So, you know, use your discretion here. But on this play, in an onside kick situation, which has appeared, the goal line is a plane of glass, and this player shattered the glass, and we'd want to shut this down. Okay? Now, also remember the new uh, enforcements. If we have a kick out of bounds here, what are we going to do? Well, kick out of bounds. We can uh, move it back five yards, have a re-kick. We can also move 25 yards uh, from the kicker's restraining line. Now, what happened if we had another penalty that moved this down to the 30? We can't move it 25. We're going to go half the distance, but that is an option. 25 yards from K's restraining line. And also, of course, we can tack on five yards to the end of the run. Those are your three options. Focus, focus, focus. Weiss calling. Pre-snap, let's get our counters out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and number twelve. What's our umpire doing right here? He's signaling that he has eleven. He did not count. Our referee did count, and he has a flag. Got twelve on the field here. Shut this thing down. The point to remember is, and I'm not sure how we're going to drive this home, more so than the next play we look at 100 percent focus each and every play do not go through the motions of counting you must count let's take a look at the next play this is the play that must drive home the point you gotta be focused 100 percent each and every play you can never take a play off i mean look at the crowd back here up at damascus Green is trailing. It's the end of the game. They score here. They're going on in the playoffs. Let's count the players. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we got three here. Eight, nine, and ten. And we have number 85 just off the picture is 11. Okay? You think this umpire counted, or is he just going through the motions? Yeah, I counted. Let's watch the play develop. There's our 11, right? Uh-oh. Number 12. Touchdown. Game over. Now, we did have an illegal formation flag on the play. Let's look at it from the, uh, I think, the uh, sideline shot. Here's a sideline view. And, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Our umpire and our referee failed to look over to the sideline and see player number 12. Now, what else? Our uh, official over here, no flag down. Official over here, had a flag down. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five. Five in the backfield. We got a problem at the snap. In fact, uh, probably the referee should have seen this too because it was in his immediate vision. I mean, that kind of jumps out at you when you see five back there like that. Nonetheless, We've got an official over here not paying attention, losing focus, not counting. We've got an official over here who did count and who did have a flag down on the play. He was correct. The only problem is he didn't stick to his convictions when the referee went 
to both officials and said, hey, are you sure? Are you sure? Well, our official on the right side, he can't be sure because he doesn't know, he doesn't have a flag down. Our official on the left side, he's got one, two, three, four, five, and dropped the flag. Problem is, he didn't stick to his convictions, insist that this play be brought back. So there you have it. In a nutshell, it's a disaster on many counts on this play. And the sad thing is, is this team over here is going to remember this for the rest of their life and, of course, blame the officials. We never blame the officials. In this case, rare case, I do blame the officials for not being 100% focused and allowing this to occur. This just cannot happen in a game of this magnitude. Five in the backfield. And then we have our umpire back here, as we saw in the earlier clip, not even bothering to count, confirming 11 with the umpire, with the referee, who also did not count on the play. Let this play be the lesson the new officials learn from. 100% focus, each and every play. Let's talk about illegal blindside blocks. When will they most often occur? Punt returns and interception returns. Could happen other times, but predominantly on punt returns and interception returns. See that player get blown up at the 42-yard line. Now, what does the official need to be on high alert for? What's going to indicate this is coming? Let's imagine the field is a one-way street. Everybody is heading down the one-way street. And all of a sudden, we're going to see one player decide to break the law and go the wrong way down the runway street. He's uh, lining this player up. And boom, he blows him up. Official down here. Field of vision. He's got to see that. Our weak side official from across the field, who's probably back here somewhere. Field of vision. Do not take the play off. You can pick this foul up from across the field, from our judge down here. Widen your field of vision to see that. And of course, our umpire, not focusing on the ball, but the action around the ball. And what does he see? Here it comes. That's vicious, vicious safety foul. Puts the flag down and continues to officiate the play. So we got to get those. Again, remember the concept of the one-way street. Everybody is going one way down the street. Everyone. Everybody's going this way. And all of a sudden, we get the traffic violator who decides to go the wrong way down the runway street, right here, lining him up, and blows the player up. Remember, the backside officials can see this also. Umpire gets it, but the backside official should also be able to see this. Great job by the umpire being focused here. Here we're going to have a block punt. Watch our referee. Really good reverse mechanic setting up on the goal line. What could he have done better? Here's the block kick. He's on the goal line. And he just instantly goes up with a touchdown. What should he do? Let's see where our wing official is. Right here. Our wing official is going to go into reverse mechanics. And what does our wing official have on this play? He's got to have the sideline. And what our referee must do is look back to your wing to get an acknowledgement of some sort that the runner was clear and was in bounds on the run before you signal touchdown. So slow it down, communicate, then get it right. What happens if this fellow stepped out of bounds at the one-yard line and we have a wing official coming in here killing it and we've got a referee signaling touchdown? Let's prevent that by communicating. There's no need for a quick signal here. Slow it down right now. Referee, look back to your uh, short wing official. If he's clear, then go up with a touchdown. I'm going to see if I can find a couple plays in my uh, archives showing that. It really is a great lesson for young wide receivers. Second down and ten. White the lone setback to the right of Thigpen. Looks left, throws, caught inside the five and close to the pylon for six. Here is another tough play on the goal line. Look at our side judge. He's shaking his head up and down. Seems to think he's got a touchdown. But what is he doing? Remember, what did we learn? First, 
proper positioning. Second, communication. Let's take a snapshot. Check out our side judge. He is in perfect position set up on the goal line. And of course as the play developed he backed up straight off that pylon into the excess area allowing himself plenty of room to operate. Look at our head linesman. In perfect position straddling the sideline in order to see whether or not the runner has stepped out of bounds. As you can see, perfect angle on the sideline. Play is over. Our side judge here has the ball breaking the plane. But what does he do? He pauses and he looks back to his head linesman for some communication. And you can see the head linesman says, Kevin, he stepped out at the two. Spot it. And what does Kevin do? Kevin spots the ball at the one yard line. Because these two officials were in the correct position to rule on the play and they communicated properly, the call was correct. Let's take a look. Two officials in superb position. Watch our side judge here. He's shaking his head up and down. He's got a score but he's pausing to look back. His linesman says, hey, Kevin, he stepped out at the two. Spot the ball. One on the goal line, one straddling the sideline, and in fact, 88 stepped out at the two. The ball's just inside the one. We have a well-officiated play. Superb communication on the long touchdown run by the quarterback along the top wall. I want you to watch our headlines at the top of the screen as well as our back judge. Right now, what does our headlinesman have? He's got wall responsibility all the way. Back judge is ready to go. Let's watch our headlinesman. Maybe I get a little tighter. Look at our headlinesman pointing. He's got him clear. The back judge signals. Let's take a look at it from the end zone shot. Here's the end zone shot, and as we're looking at it, the important thing to remember, even though it looks pretty easy that this quarterback is clear of the wall, how much better does it look when we have that communication? Yeah, it's, it's an easy call, but let's make it look superb. We've got the linesman. It's not a tight call. Signals to him. I've got him inside, and then the back judge goes up. It just looks so much better when we communicate like this. There's no hurry. In a situation like this, linesman points, back judge goes up. Perfect communication. It looks really good. And of course, uh, I guess we had a flag here. So that's good, good job here. Let's see if we can see the flag coming in. We've got a hit well away from the play. Here it comes. These two players, well away from the play, trailing the play, and he decides to blow them up. We get a flag here. Great call. Hit away from the action. That is unnecessary. Bang it. And the crew does. Great call. Does it ever hurt to communicate? It does not. Even on an easy touchdown call like this, watch our wing on the right side of the screen. He's got him clear of the wall. Gives the point to the back judge who then goes up. How good does that look? Again, easy call, nothing difficult, but does it ever hurt to communicate? It makes it look so much better. Well done. Here's a lapse in communication on this play. We're snapped at the 12. Short wings here, deep wings here. Shouldn't the deep wing be set up on the goal line here when we're snapped at the 12? Shouldn't these two officials be talking to each other? Hey, hey, we're at the 12. It's your goal line. It's your goal line. It's your goal line. Communication, gentlemen. Communicate. Get in the right position. Here's just another angle of the same play. We see we're snapped at the 12. We've got our deep wing here, our short wing here. Let's take a look over here. 
here, this deep wing did get the message because he's going back to the goal line. Again, 100% focus each and every play. Perform the mechanics properly. Lots to discuss on this play. First, let's just talk about simple forward progress. The scrum continues to progress forward. The runner is not stopped. He's not down. It continues to press forward. The officials must be patient. And forward progress is about right here, yet we have a line judge coming in and jipping the player almost five yards on forward progress. So we have to have a better understanding of what forward progress is. Again, we can see the scrum is moving forward. The runner's not down. And the pile just continues to move forward. We have to be patient. And then forward progress again is up here, not back here. Give the runner everything he's entitled to. Okay, now let's go to some rules issues. Here we're going to have a defender. You're going to see his helmet come off. And I think it's 964 says for a player, it's a, it's a legal participation for a player whose helmet comes off completely during a down to continue to participate, and here's the key, beyond the immediate action in which he's engaged. So we can see the helmet off of uh, this player here, okay? It's not a rules violation. Unfortunately, he is not participating beyond the immediate action. He's still in the immediate action. He is not the runner. If he was the runner, we would have to kill it. So we don't have a foul there. The only thing is, uh, after the play is over, since his helmet did not come off because of a foul, he must sit for one play. Just keep this in mind. Like I said, a lot to learn on this play. First, we've got to understand basic concept of forward progress. Just because the pile is moving slow forward doesn't mean forward progress has been stopped. Forward progress is up here. Forward progress is not back here. And we've discussed the helmet rule. He is not participating beyond the immediate action, so we, we're not going to foul him for illegal participation. And he's not the runner. So we're not killing it. Wow, five yards. We've gypped this runner out of forward progress. Here's some rules 101. What do we have here, or should I ask, what should we have here? Try by point. This is not a field goal. It's a try. What's the result? According to this crew, they're giving them a point. What's the rule? As soon as the try by kick is not good, and in this case, it's not good as soon as it's blocked, everybody needs to have whistles with air in them killing this thing. It's a dead ball. The try is blocked. The play is over. Six officials on the field. Nobody knew the rule. Let's not forget this as we move forward. Now, there's a reason I will never be an umpire. I don't want that position. I didn't ask for it. And our umpire here basically becomes a pinball. Great job staying upright. Sometimes you just can't avoid the action. And uh, that's the way it goes. Excellent job by the umpire staying upright. But sometimes, hey, again, give them a lot of credit. Not going to catch me inside with those big guys like that. As football officials, there's a couple things we need to learn and remember while we're reviewing videotape. We all like to think we're the best at what we do. Nobody enjoys getting criticized. It's human nature to enjoy being right and feel a sense of hurt when we're wrong. The thing is, we all need critique. Critique is nothing more than a challenge to make us better. And the example I always give is... I've got uh, IFL officials from the West Coast. They showed up this past year at the Tom Beard Clinic, a great college clinic operated uh, on the East and West Coast in the off-season. A couple of the IFL evaluators are clinicians at that clinic, and they met up with a couple of the IFL West Coast officials. They never met, but they, hey, you work in the IFL. You evaluate in the IFL. So they hooked up, and they said, you know what, to the evaluators, we enjoy every Tuesday morning after the games 
when you evaluators rip us apart. You teach us a lot. And that's the key to being a great official. You accept the constructive criticism. It makes you better. And that's what the superb official does. And remember, these are Division I top-level officials that said, hey, we enjoy getting ripped apart every Tuesday morning by you guys. You do a great job making us better. Now, in some aspects of life, there are times when you shouldn't listen to criticism. For example, when it's based on falsehoods or given in such a way that's meant to destroy your sense of self-worth. But that's not the case in football officiating. We've got videotape, and the videotape does not lie. When we're on the receiving end of the critique, the goal must be to learn from the feedback and not let emotion close our minds. You must be proactive, not reactive. Look at the video and make the decision to get better. Do not minimize the problem. When receiving critique, your first instinct obviously is, hey, is that really that big of a deal? Or I didn't do that improperly. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But for the evaluator who's grading the film and who brought it to your attention, it was very important. And you can be sure it will be important for others too. Remember, when you're striving for excellence, the small stuff matters. Do not rationalize because it doesn't help. Don't make excuses. If somebody has the courage to tell you that your performance needs to be improved, don't waste time with excuses. Instead, ask why improvement was needed and listen carefully. Don't justify yourselves. If you keep a learning mindset when it comes to criticism, this will bring the most benefit. If you see yourself as correct all the time, you're missing something. Do not shift the blame. For some, it's always the other guy's fault. But guess what? Those individuals usually end up pretty lonely. We can't control others, but we can work on ourselves. When we accept criticism, apply it, and move forward, not only do we benefit, but the others will benefit from our example. Remember, there's only one perfect being, and he's never officiated a football game. Thank you for your attention.